The SUV craze is such that high riding wagons are increasingly being tasked with doing the job of sports cars, despite physics clearly working against them. While the results have been mixed, Mercedes AMG has some serious form in this area, so much so that it's now unleashed the second generation GLE 63S. Yep, this large SUV is looking to do its best impersonation of a sports car, and we're here to find out if it's a convincing Jekyll and Hyde. But before we do, there's a bit to get through here, so I'll break this video into chapters with their time codes right over here. So feel free to skip ahead to anything you're particularly interested in. And if you're watching on YouTube, there are markers in the timeline below to make skipping ahead even easier. But be sure to give this video a like before you do. And as always, if you want to know more about the GLE 63S, be sure to read my detailed written review over at the Cars Guide website or click the link in the description below. And if you're not sure if the GLE 63S is right for you, we've reviewed plenty of other SUVs. So be sure to subscribe to the Cars Guide YouTube channel and tap that bell icon to get a notification every time we make a new upload. Now, let's take a look at pricing and specification. With the Audi RS Q8 and BMW's X5 and X6M competition firmly in its sights, the new GLE 63S is available in two body styles with the wagon appealing to the traditionalists out there, while the coupe targets the style conscious. Priced from about $220,000 plus on road costs, the new wagon is just under $25,000 dearer than its predecessor. While the rise is unfortunate, it is accompanied by the fitment of a lot more standard equipment. And the same is true of the new coupe, which is priced from about $225,000, making it a tick over $22,000 more expensive than its forebear. Either way, standard equipment includes metallic paintwork, dust sensing lights, rain sensing wipers, power folding side mirrors with heating, side steps, soft closed doors, keyless entry, rear privacy glass, and a power operated tailgate. Inside, push button start, a panoramic sunroof, satellite navigation with live traffic, digital radio, a 590 watt Burmester sound system with 13 speakers, a head up display, a power adjustable steering column, power adjustable front seats with heating, cooling and massaging functionality, heated front armrests and outboard rear seats, temperature controlled front cup holders and four zone climate control, stainless steel pedals and an auto dimming rear view mirror feature. Next, we'll check out the design. Few large SUVs are imposing as the GLE 63S, which is a good thing considering it wants to be taken seriously. Up front, it's immediately identifiable as a Mercedes AMG model thanks to its distinctive Panamericana grill insert. The angry look is punctuated by the angular daytime running lights integrated into the multi-beam LED headlights, while the chunky front bumper has large air intakes. Around the side, the GLE 63S stands out with its aggressive wheel arch extensions and side skirts, with the wagon getting 21-inch alloy wheels as standard, while the coupe gets 22-inch items. From the A-pillars onwards, the differences between the wagon and coupe body styles start to become apparent with the latter's roofline much more steeply raked. At the rear, the wagon and the coupe differentiate themselves even more clearly with their unique tailgates, LED lights, and diffusers. That said, they do have a sports exhaust system with squared off quad tailpipes in common. It's worth mentioning the difference in body style also means a difference in dimensions. The coupe is seven millimeters longer than the wagon despite having a 60 millimeter shorter wheelbase. And it's also one millimeter narrower and 66 millimeters shorter in height. Inside, the GLE 63S stands out from the GLE crowd with its multi-console front sport seats, which feel really good, and also its AMG Sport steering wheel, which has Dynamica accents as standard. This particular test vehicle also has carbon fibre trim, not only on the steering wheel, but also throughout the cabin to make it feel that little bit sportier. It's also got metallic accents to break things up and a black headliner to make things feel extra sporty. In terms of luxury though, Napa leather upholstery is standard, covering pretty much every interior surface. What it doesn't cover though are the door bins, which are unfortunately of the hard plastic variety. Elsewhere ahead of the driver is a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster and to the side a 12.3 inch touchscreen, with both powered by Mercedes ubiquitous MBUX multimedia system, which as we know is one of the best in the game. Can also be controlled by the touchpad here on the center console and you've got apple carplay and android auto supports should you choose to use it instead 
In terms of controlling it all, there also is another option on the steering wheel. You've got the touchpad controls here, which make it nice and easy while you're on the move. And there's also always on natural voice control, which works really well too. Next, we'll check out practicality. Being a large SUV, you'd expect the GLE 63S to be practical, and it is. But what you wouldn't expect is the coupe to have a 25 litre advantage when it comes to cargo capacity. But that's due to its higher window line. When you actually stow the 40-20-40 split fold second row, the wagon has a 220 litre advantage thanks to its boxier design. In terms of the coupe's boot, there is a small load lip to contend with, which can make loading bulkier items a little bit more difficult. What makes them easier though, is this little switch over here, which lowers the air suspension by 50 mil for a lower load height. In terms of other features of the boot, there are four tie down points and a couple of bag hooks to make securing loose items nice and easy. Here in the second row, occupants are taken care of pretty nicely. Again, I'm in the coupe right now and it has a 60 millimeter shorter wheelbase than the wagon, so you do sacrifice some rear leg room. That said, behind my 184 centimeter driving position, there's a few inches of leg rooms. It's actually pretty comfortable here. Even headroom's not too bad. I've got about an inch, which is an inch less than the wagon, but still pretty good despite that sloped roof line. GLE is also nice and wide that you can fit three adults across pretty easily. Thanks to that small transmission tunnel, there's enough room for feet. And if you want to fit child seats, there are a couple of Isofix anchorage points, as well as three top tether, so that's pretty good too. Now, in terms of amenities, we've got a fold down armrest with a couple of cup holders, which is pretty good. We've also got the door bins as well, which can take a couple of bottles too. And in this centre cubby here, folds down and there's room for a couple of smartphones because of course next to them are a couple of USB-C points for charging phones. And you've got map pockets on the back of the front seats here for securing some loose items. Next, we'll check out the first row. Amenities wise, there are a couple of cup holders just in front of the center console and they're actually temperature controlled so you can make them heated or cooled depending on what you need. And just in front of them is a wireless smartphone charger and to the side a couple of USB-C ports and a 12 volt power outlet. In the central bin, it's pretty large. There's another USB-C port in there and also a holder for a smartphone which is pretty good. And the glove box is pleasingly on the larger side able to take the owner's manual and plenty of other stuff too, which is quite nice. The door bins are also huge. They're able to swallow a few bottles with ease, so it's pretty practical up front. Next, we'll check out safety. ANCAP awarded the second generation GLE range its maximum five-star safety rating in 2019, meaning the new GLE 63S gets full marks from the Independent Safety Authority. Advanced driver assist systems generously extend to autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection, lane keep and steering assist, including emergency, adaptive cruise control with stop and go functionality, traffic sign recognition, driver attention alert, high beam assist, active blind spot monitoring and cross traffic alert, tyre pressure monitoring, hill descent control, park assist, surround view cameras and front and rear parking sensors. Other standard safety equipment includes nine airbags, anti-skid brakes, electronic brake force distribution, and the usual traction and stability control systems. Now we'll take a look at the engine and transmission. The new GLE 63S is powered by Mercedes-AMG's ubiquitous 4.0-litre twin-turbo V8 petrol engine, with its version pumping out a hard-hitting 450 kilowatts of power and 850 newton metres of torque. But that's not all. It's also got a 48 volt mild hybrid system called EQ Boost. As its name suggests, it has an integrated starter generator that provides up to 16 kilowatts and 250 newton meters of electric boost in short bursts, basically helping to account for any turbo lag. Made it to a nine speed torque converter automatic transmission, and Mercedes AMG's rear bias 4Matic Plus all wheel drive system, the GLE 63S sprints from a standstill to 100 kilometers per hour in a scant 3.8 seconds, no matter the body style. Next, we'll check out fuel consumption. The GLE 63S's fuel consumption on the combined cycle test varies from body style to body style, with the wagon averaging 12.4 litres per 100 kilometres, while the coupe requires 0.2 litres more. When you consider the high level of performance on offer, 
both claims are pretty reasonable. And they're made possible by the engine cylinder deactivation technology, as well as the 48 volt EQ boost mild hybrid system, which has coasting and extended idle stop functionality. That said, in our real world testing with the wagon, we averaged 12.7 litres per 100 kilometres over 149 kilometres. While that's a surprisingly good result, its launch route mainly consisted of high speed roads, so expect a much higher result in metropolitan areas. And in the coupe, we averaged a higher but still respectable 14.4 litres over 68 kilometres, although its launch route purely took place on high speed country roads, and you know what that means. Next, we'll take a look at ownership. As with all Mercedes AMG models, the GLE 63S comes with a five year unlimited kilometre warranty, which currently sets the standard for the premium market. It also comes with five years of roadside assistance. Better yet, the GLE 63S's service intervals are relatively long at every year or 20,000 kilometres, whichever comes first. It's also available with a five year 100,000 kilometre cap price servicing plan, but it costs $4,450 in total, or an average of $890 per visit. Yep, the GLE 63S isn't exactly cheap to maintain, but you expected that. Next, we'll check out how it drives. When you've got 450 kilowatts and 850 newt meters to play with, you can expect the GLE 63S to be pretty quick, and it is. Even in the comfort drive mode right now, if I put my foot down, it takes a moment, but once it picks up, it certainly goes. As you can see, the transmission is a little hesitant initially, but it does shift gears pretty smoothly, which is nice. But if you want a little bit more urgency, you can use the switch on the steering wheel to flick between the different drive modes. And obviously, if you go for Sport Plus, the sportiest of the drive modes, it's a little bit more <laughs> responsive. Either way, acceleration is explosive, and you've got so much torque to lean on down low that you can really just punch out a few quick runs whenever you want. So it is quite impressive in that regard. Now obviously in terms of the sound, uh, you do have a variable exhaust system. Now even in the comfort mode, which I'm back in now, there's a little switch on the centre console that you can flick and that can give you a little bit more noise, which you can hear. You get backfire, crackles and pops, all of the good stuff. It sounds great, but you don't get the full effect unless you're in the Sport Plus driving mode, in which case you really get to experience the visceral nature of the GLE 63S. Now when you're travelling at speed in a large SUV, you obviously hope that the brakes are pretty good and the GLE 63S is sure are. You've got 400mm disc brakes up front and six piston calipers gripping them, so they pull up really, really strongly. Now grip, you would assume with all this power, could potentially be compromised, but it's not. Again, you've got that all-wheel drive system that is rear biased, but it's got a limited slip differential and active torque vectoring, so it's able to find grip even when you do push it really, really hard. So you're never gonna have the GLE 63S becoming unstuck, which is quite, again, reassuring. Handling-wise, there's obviously two and a half tons to contend with, so you do feel that weight a little bit, but it is helped by the active anti-roll bars, which manage to keep the body flat as you start cornering hard. And there's also active engine mounts, which again, try and improve handling by keeping everything relatively in control. The result is a large SUV that kind of defies physics. It is a much smaller car in feel, despite the fact that obviously it's just not. So that is quite impressive. As far as steering goes, the GLE 63S is pretty damn good too. It's got a variable ratio and it's speed sensitive, but the overall result is something that is really direct and quick, but also well weighted. In the comfort mode, it's actually pretty perfect as far as I'm concerned. You can obviously go to Sport and Sport Plus and progressively add weight, but I don't know why you would bother. And it's also important noting that the coupe actually has a more direct ratio than the wagon does, which means it turns in that little bit more sharply, but again, it's not a huge difference. The differences between the wagon and the coupe in terms of the wheelbase are harder to pick. Obviously with a shorter wheelbase, the coupe should handle a little bit better, but even driving them back to back, it is a little bit difficult to tell, but either way, you're still gonna get a surprisingly good experience. Now in terms of the ride, you do have air suspension and adaptive dampers, and as you'd expect, that combination is actually pretty comfortable. In the comfort drive mode, it's more than livable. Actually, it's pretty damn good. 
even on these coarse chip country roads it goes quite nicely. Turn it up to sport and things become a little bit firmer but still livable. If you go sport plus the ride does start to become a bit more jittery and really you're not going to probably ever use it in sport plus, not that often at least or maybe on a track if you ever were to do that. So again just keep it in comfort and you're going to get the absolute best experience. Finally, in terms of noise, vibration and harshness levels, the GLE is pretty good, but you do get a bit of tyre roar coming through into the cabin at highway speeds. And at about 110 kilometres an hour, there is a bit of wind whistle over the side mirrors. So yeah, that does penetrate the cabin, but if you've got the lovely Burmester sound system pumping, you're probably not gonna hear it. It's little wonder the GLE 63S is back for a second go around, with it well and truly putting the frighteners on the Audi RS Q8 and BMW X5 and X6M competition. After all, it's a large SUV that sacrifices little in the way of practicality in its pursuit of high performance. For that reason, we're itching to go for another drive, with or without the family. And don't forget, there's more detail in my written review, including a breakdown of the overall score, over at the Cars Guide website.